Okay, so I guess we can start now. Uh, my name is John. The presentation is about Gradle, how you can use it to feed applications with multimedia content. So, um, there is a lot to talk about, but uh, I don't know if I will manage to cover all of it, so let's see. Uh, I would like to start by introducing the problem that we try to solve with, with Grillo, which is how we integrate multimedia content in applications, the problems related to that. Then I will explain how Grillo helps us, us doing that. Uh, and when we have the idea clear about what Grillo is all about, then I will explain how you can use it from your applications to do that. Um, and if we have time, I, I would also like to introduce uh, how you can then write plugins for Grillo and extend what it offers already. And to wrap up the presentation, I would like to do a small demo with some things we've done with Grillo. Um, so let's begin. Uh, let's start uh, introducing the problems related to integrating multimedia content in your applications. So the idea here is there's a lot of multimedia content available, right? So we have things like YouTube, Shoutcast, UPnP, Diamondo, Podcast, a lot of stuff there, right? Um, but, and we are used to consume content from many of these uh, services every day. But if we think about how we use, the, use them, uh, we realize we are actually using very different applications to do that. Uh, for example, in this mobile phone, I have here, I have a couple of YouTube viewer applications, but these are only useful to watch videos from YouTube. Uh, if I want to play some uh, content that I have stored on, on a memory card, for example, I have to use the built-in media player, which offers a different kind of experience, a different UI for doing that. If I want to use UPnP content, UPnP content, uh, I can use the built-in media player as well, which is nice because I, I can have the same experience for, for both kinds of services. Uh, but if I want to use something else, like uh, maybe uh, Last.fm, for example, then I have to use some other applications like Vagalume, for example, for the M900, which is nice. It's a different kind of UI. If I want to consume content from Jamendo, I might have to use another application or a web browser, which is not really convenient, right? Um, so it's no wonder that most multimedia applications today are trying to integrate more and more of these services because that's what we as users are demanding somehow. Uh, the problem with this is uh, it's not really easy because many of these services, all of them actually, expose their content through different APIs, uh, require you to run different technologies, and you have to learn all that and use all that from your application. That's a lot of work. Um, and not only that, it's, it's a lot of code too that then you have to maintain in the future alone. So even though there's a lot of work, since this is what we as users are, are, are demanding now and probably more in the future, there are a lot of applications that, that are doing this effort already. So we have Totem, we have Rhythmbox, we have XBMC or Amarok, and they are, they are all trying to do this, okay? But the problem with this is they, they are all trying to do uh, application-specific solutions. So the solution for Totem is not directly reusable in any other application. So you can just take the plugin for Totem and use it in, in Amarok or in XVMC or any other uh, application of yours. Uh, these solutions are designed and implemented to work for one particular application. Of course, they are open source, so you can still go to the code and borrow some code for that, but you still have to do the effort of checking which code you can reuse separate it from the code that's specific for the application, and then maintain that code and tweak it to fit your, your, the design of your, of your own application. Uh, and then you will have to maintain it, so, as I was saying. So all these applications are kind of doing the same effort and maintaining all that effort in, 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 the, in the time, and it's, not, it's really a waste of, of, of time. If we could have a solution that works for all of them, we would be saving a lot of time. And that's the reason we created Grillo. Uh, we want to help that with, with that and provide a solution that would work for, for as many application developers as possible so they don't have to do and repeat all the, this work and maintain it in the, in, the, in the time. So what is Grillo? Well, Grillo is a framework for easy access to multimedia content. And the idea is that as an application developer, what I'm interested in is uh, uh, obtaining all that content from all these services. I want to browse content from them. I want to search content. 
but I'm not interested in how they work internally. I don't care how YouTube exposes its content. I don't care how Yamendo does it or how UPMP does work. What I'm interested is just in browsing and searching, and that's what I want them to offer me. So how do we do that? Well, we expose a single API for application developers that hides the differences among all these different services. So you don't have to care about them anymore. Uh, you don't have to learn about the YouTube uh, APIs or the Yamendo APIs anymore. You just see one API, which is the Grillo API, and that's the only thing that you need to uh, get content from any service supported in Grillo. And the idea is not really new. I mean, it's the same idea we have in many other successful projects, like GStreamer, for example, but applied to a different field. In GStreamer, uh, what, what GStreamer is offering to us as an application developer is uh, an API to uh, forget about the differences between different media formats. So I can play MP3s or H.264 video or any other format, and I don't have to make that happen in my application. I don't have to code specifically for that. Uh, it's transparent for me as a developer. And definitely, that makes my, my, my experience uh, as an application developer a lot better. Well, the idea we are trying to achieve with Rilo is the same thing, but applied to a different context, in this case, the media providers. So by doing this, what we achieve is that uh, when I write an application that deals with uh, different services, I can write my use cases just once. So I, I write my browsing code or my searching code once, and it will work, it will work on any service. It will work on YouTube, it will work on, on Jamendo, it will work on, on Shoutcast, and any others. I don't have to code for, for each one of them. And I think this uh, picture here summarizes how this works. So at the bottom, uh, in yellow, we have various um, multimedia services like YouTube for, or UPnP or Shoutcast. And then on top of it, we have various boxes in green which represent technologies that we have to learn and use to consume content from all of them. And there are a lot. For example, if I want to use YouTube, I have GData. Or if I want to use uh, uh, UPnP, I have UPnP and so on. But there's a lot of stuff there that I have to learn and use in my application. Uh, however, if we have Brillo, we have backends that use these technologies to deal with the, with the services. They, they do all that work. But on top of them, we have an API for application developers that hides all the stuff. So fr from the application point of view, it only is one API. And that API is enough to handle all these, all these different services, which reduces the work a lot. And you, we can reuse the same solution for as many applications as we want. So this is what we try to do with Grillo. And now is how do you use that in your applications? If you're interested in grabbing content from many services, how do I use it? So this is kind of a small tutorial, uh, not really a tutorial because it's not complete, but just to get, give some ideas about how this works. So the first thing uh, uh, you probably want to do with Grillo is getting access to these uh, sources or media providers. How do I get a reference to them so I can start browsing or searching content from them? And for that, we have this plain registry object. Uh, the way it works is uh, very easy, actually. Uh, you have this source added signal uh, here. You connect a callback to that. And when you start loading the plugins that you have for Grillo, it will invoke your callback for each media provider it finds. So you basically have all the stuff when you want. Uh, but maybe what you want to do is something different. Maybe you already have the plugins loaded and what you are interested in is just grabbing a reference to one in particular. Like, I'm interested in YouTube now or in Gemendo. How do I do that? Well, in that case, once the plugins have, have been loaded, you can just use this lookup source uh, API and you pass the, the, the identifier of the, of the service you're interested in and it will provide you uh, the object. But uh, many times what you want is not that. You want to find services that implement a particular interface. Like, I'm interested in uh, media providers that I can browse or media providers that I can search content from. So in that case, you use this other API, get sources by operations, and you pass a list of operations you are interested in, and it will provide you with uh, providers that actually implement them. So for example, if you want to do uh, uh, some search use case, and you want to have a combo with all the services that you, you can search from, you would use something like this. 
Okay, so now I, I got the reference to one of these objects that can provide me content. So now how, how can I, I actually get the content from it? So if, if, the, if the media provider is browsable, then you can browse it. And for that, we have this API, URL Media Source Browse. And the idea here is uh, you pass the, the source object that you want to browse from, like the YouTube or, or, or the Jamendo service, for example. Uh, and then you pass a container, because browsing is about navigating through a hierarchy of content exposed by that source, like you would browse a file system, for example. Uh, so you have to pass a container. How do you obtain that container? Well, you pass null for the root container, and from that, the results of the browse operation would pr provide you with e either media items or other containers that you can uh, browse recursively. Then you pass a list of metadata information you're interested in, like uh, the title, the artist, the album information, the URL, so you can then play, back, play it back in, in, in your media player. Page information, like I'm interested in results from 0 to 100 or from 100 to 200 and a set of flags that would allow you to control certain behaviors of how this works. I will explain that in detail later on. And then a browse callback and user data for that callback. The idea here is that the results are being uh, given to you through this callback. So for each result that matches your browse operation, it will invoke the callback for you. And the signature of the callback is, is below. Um, you get uh, the, the source object for each result that matches the, the, the browse operation. Uh, it will provide you with the source object, uh, the operation ID, uh, so you can match the result with the operation that, that um, initiated it. A URL media object, that is basically the media that matches that result, like um, a certain video from YouTube or, um, or some song from Jamendo. Uh, remaining count, which is uh, tracking information, so you know how many items are coming after this one. So when you get the remaining zero, it means that the operation is done, the browse operation is finished. Uh, the user data you pass to the callback and a GRR in case there was some error with the operation. And for each media you get through, through this callback, you can just use things like GRL media get title or get album or artist or URL or whatever so you can access the, the information you requested. Searching is the same thing, actually. Uh, the only difference between browsing and searching is that when you browse, you specify a container you want to navigate. And for search, you specify a text uh, you want to search from. Uh, so it's like on YouTube. You just uh, put some text and search for it. Well, this is the same thing here. But the API, other than that, is the same that for browsing. And the callback is actually the same as well. So from the application developer point of view, there's not a lot of difference between implementing searching and browsing. And let's now go into a bit more of detail and explain what those flags are for. So other than the normal way of operation, we, have, we can uh, modify the way these operations behave using three flags. Um, for the full flag that we have here, uh, the idea is the following. We have two types of plugins. One are the so-called media providers, uh, which provide you with content, like a YouTube plugin. Uh, but then we have other plugins that provide you with additional metadata and not additional content. So imagine, for example, that we have a, a plugin based on Tracker that can provide me with uh, all the tracks, all the tracks that I have stored on my, on my hard drive, OK? Uh, Tracker can provide me with titles, artists information, album information, but probably won't provide me uh, with album covers for these songs. So, uh, of course, I know that with that information that Tracker is giving to me, I can go to some uh, online services and get uh, thumbnails of the album art covers. Uh, but I have to do that myself, and that's not convenient. So what we have is we have this other type of plugins that can use all the meta information that we have available to, to generate more information, like the album covers, for example. Uh, when we want to do that, we enable this flag. And Grillo will automatically use all these other plugins to complete the information you requested. Uh, it can slow down the operation, of course, but uh, you get more metadata. The idle relay uh, flag is to ease the uh, implementation effort on the application side, the, uh, on the application side, and also to make it 
uh, better. If you are an experienced uh, developer, application developer, you know that when you have to uh, handle big chunks of, of, uh, of data in the application, it's not convenient to do that synchronously because you will block the, the, the event loop and the application will not refresh, it, it will not be responsive and, and, and that. So we want to avoid that and of course if you're an experienced developer, you will do that yourself, but it still is a pain in the ass. So what we do is uh, we can instruct Grillo that when you browse or, or, or search for content, it invokes the callback that you have in the idle loop, for example, for you, if you want. Uh, so you can uh, forget about doing that in your application. Uh, and the fast only uh, flag is uh, because some services, uh, for some services, retrieving certain metadata is a lot more expensive than, than, than other stuff. So for example, if, if you want to retrieve information from YouTube, you can do just one query, and it will provide you with a lot of stuff. But for some uh, keys in particular, you might have another query for each item in the result set. So instead of resolving everything in just one go, you may have to do, if, I don't know, 100 more queries just to resolve that metadata for, for, this ex extra, for these items you, you got. Uh, and sometimes that's not what you want. Uh, so uh, for that we have this flag and the idea is that, look, I'm interested in all this information, but I'm only interested in it if it's fast, if I can retrieve it fast. Uh, in that case, you use this flag and you can ensure that the plugins won't do an, an excessive amount of work to, to get information. And even though uh, browsing and searching are the most important operations, I guess uh, there we, we have more API in Grillo. So this is uh, some of the stuff we have. Uh, we have the query interface. Basically, uh, the idea here is that for some services, uh, browsing or searching uh, is uh, maybe, uh, it doesn't cover all the, all the uh, features that it provides. And maybe you can do some more complex stuff like filtering, for example. Uh, but the idea here is uh, we didn't want to burden uh, plugin developers with uh, implementing that in a specific way. We wanted to give them freedom to choose the way it, it fits better with the, with the service they're implementing. So in this case, uh, the query interface can be used to give some extra juice to application developers, but it is uh, plugin specific. So it's the plugin developer that defines how the query interface works. And uh, then if you use that from your application, you will be coding particularly for that service, but you can get some extra juice that otherwise you wouldn't. Uh, the multiple search. Uh, sometimes you are not interested in searching content on a particular service. So if, if I'm interested in getting media content about Wadek, uh, I don't want to search from it on YouTube and then go to Vimeo and then go to some other uh, place where I can flicker, for example. I'm just interested in searching from content about Wadek anywhere that, that I can search from. So this is the multiple search API. Uh, we can, of course, cancel operations like browsing or, or, or uh, searching. Uh, we can retrieve uh, extra metadata about media items that we already got, like I browse and I only request the titles because that's what I need for, for, for a presentation, but then when I double click on some item, I want to show additional metadata like thumbnails or whatever, and well, then I can use, uh, I, I don't have to browse again, I can just retrieve more metadata anytime I need it or for services that provide that, uh, we can actually change the metadata. Uh, the resolve op op method is for, for the example I mentioned before with the Almart covers, in which I already have some metadata and I need to use that metadata to get additional metadata. Like for example, I can use the album and, and the artist information to get the album covers. That's the resolve operation. And uh, for some services where it makes sense, we can actually push content to the, to the service or remove content from it. For example, if you have a podcast plugin, uh, you have to configure it with the, with the podcast you're interested in. So for that, you can, do, you can push that content with, with the store method and remove it. As well. uh, so uh, if you use Grillo today, this is what you will find already implemented. I mean. Uh, we have, 
a good variety of plugins. Most of them were developed to test our APIs and see how they worked. Uh, so we wanted to have a good variety of them to test various cases. Uh, and well, the, the level of, of uh, compliance for each of one is different, but I think they are all fairly useful as, as they are today. And well, there's a lot of stuff already. So if you, the, the idea here is, is you write an application that uses Grillo, you write browsing code or searching code once and it will work for all of these and for any, any other plugin that will come in the future as well which is a, a nice feature, I think. Uh, this slide uh, introduces a little bit some, topic, some topic that will be covered in more detail in one of the lighting talks that we have tomorrow. Uh, but I would like to uh, uh, talk a little bit about it also today. The idea is in GNOME we have this media server spec in which uh, Shisheng is, is working. Uh, the idea here is uh, how to expose multi multimedia content over DBus, okay? It has two benefits. One of them is that you don't have to link the media provider's code in your application, in case you don't want to do that. Uh, and the other is that uh, the media provider libraries, like Grillo, don't need to uh, work on providing bindings for it for, so you can actually use it from, from your language of choice. Um, because you know you can access DBus with Python or with Vala or with anything. So it's it, 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 at, at the moment we don't have bindings for all languages. We are working on that. Uh, we are working on on bindings based on the object introspection, uh, but we are not there yet. And still, you can use Grillo over DBus through this interface if you want. Uh, the project we are, or the way we are doing this is uh, through a project that we call Roger Grillo, although maybe we will change the name in the future. Uh, and the idea is basically a media server that exposes the content you, uh, uh, obtained through Grillo over DBus implementing this spec. So you basically, if you, you, you create a consumer for that spec over, over using DBus, you can access the content. And we are working also on plugins for Totem and Rhythmbox that use this spec. So, uh, okay, I still have a little bit of time, so I'll try to cover how you can create plugins for Grillo, uh, but I will have to go very quickly, I think. So if you want to write new plugins for Grillo, that's new services or metadata resolvers, uh, you have to think uh, that there are two types. One is for media providers, uh, which basically provide new media content, like YouTube or Jamend or Shoutcast. And usually these, these uh, plugins provide implementations for browsing functions, searching, querying, storing, or removing, depending on what makes sense for that service. Uh, if you are uh, interested in writing metadata providers, that uh, provide extra metadata, not actual content, uh, like the album art plugin or a ratings plugin or uh, something that checks IMDB information or something like that, then uh, you will have to implement this resolve operation, which basically resolves the metadata you're interested in. And this is how, it, this is a small example, okay? Uh, let's think of a plugin that uh, that's the album cover resolution I mentioned before. So basically, uh, what we want is based on uh, artist and album information, we want to get access to album covers, okay? So this is how it will like. Uh, it's, it, it will look like. Uh, we have to implement three uh, operations here, which are supported keys, key depends, and resolve. The idea of supported keys is to provide a declaration of what uh, metadata I can resolve for you. So in, this, in the case of this plugin, it's only the, the thumbnail for the, for the album art cover. Only that, so we only specify that. This allows Grillo to know that it can use this plugin only to resolve that. Uh, and then we provide, uh, the, in the key depends API function, we provide a list of dependencies that we need uh, for, for resolving that. For example, in this case, for the, album, for the thumbnail information, we need the artist and the album. So we specify that. Uh, this will make Grillo make sure that when it uses my 
my, my, my plugin, it will have that information beforehand so I can do my work. And then I implement the resolve method in which I use that information that I specified to resolve the, the, the metadata. So in this case, if I'm, if I'm resolving the thumbnail for the album art, I would uh, get the artist and the album information from the media I already have uh, because I specified that I needed that information to do my operation. Then I would use that to resolve the, 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 the thumbnail information, um, uh, creating the URL to the last FM uh, uh, site, for example. And when I, I have done that, I just set the media in the media object and invoke a callback to signal that I'm done and you already have the information you requested. Uh, this, the other type of plugins, uh, the, the media providers, uh, will usually look like this. You would implement uh, the browse operation and or, because it's not mandatory, I mean, you implement those you are interested in or those that make sense the search operation or the metadata operation. Uh, I don't have a lot of time to go into details, but just to give you an example, uh, the search operation could look something like this. Uh, so let's imagine we have a, a database with a few podcasts stored and we want to, to implement the searching uh, API. So probably I would uh, map that, uh, uh, that operation to some uh, SQL uh, query to that database that would use the text I'm looking for, uh, the keys, like, that's the fields I'm interested in, and the skip and count parameters to know which page of the results I'm interested in. And with that, I will create a list of, of media objects of type GRL media, which basically uh, represent the information, the metadata information I'm interested in for each media object. And with that, I basically invoke the callback that the user provided me uh, to, to pass the results, specifying, as, as I said before, uh, all the information I mentioned, like the source, the operation ID, the media object, the remaining count information, and, and the user that uh, he provided me with. And that's basically it. Okay, uh, la let's now do a quick demo. This is a demo of... Uh, um, plugin for Totem that I wrote some time ago. Okay, so the idea here is we have two tabs. One is a browser tab and the search tab. Uh, the idea for the browser tab is that we show all the browsable plugins, okay? And uh, because they are all browsable, I can navigate through them. So, uh, for example, I'm browsing the YouTube uh, plugin, which exposes content in, in categories and standard fields and so and so on. Uh, the idea is that because they all implement the same API, I can do, I can use the same code to browse from Shoutcast, for example, or from a podcast plugin, or from my file system, or anything else. It's the same code that is able to deal with all of them. Now, the podcast uh, case is special because you can push content to it. Uh, so we can implement that. We can detect that it implements the storing interface and I can push a, a new podcast to it. So basically provide the title and the URL of the feed and it will expose it as a new category that I can browse. And when I browse it, it will get the feed, parse it and show me the, the contents. But that will be transparent for me as an application developer. For me, it's the same as YouTube or anything else. Okay. Let's now, I guess you get the idea, for Jamendo is a similar idea, you just expose content, in this case using artists and album, I mean every plugin is free to choose the hierarchy it, 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 that makes sense for it and, and that kind of stuff. Okay, let's uh, skip to some other, okay, so this is the search tab, okay, and uh, we have a combo with all the searchable uh, backends and we search for something, so like WADIC, for example, on YouTube, and it will search for WADIC on YouTube. With the multiple search API, I don't have an example of that here, but uh, we can search on anything. So I could search for WADIC on YouTube and Flickr and anything else, all in one go. Uh, and again, the same thing. Uh, because the APIs are the same for all of them, I can do the same, use the same code to, to, to do the same kind of operation on Shoutcast or any other uh, service or on the podcast I have stored on my database, or anything else. So again, the same code for, for, for everything. 
And so I search for rock in Gemendo and it works and it's the same as searching rock in Shoutcast or searching Wadik on, on YouTube. Uh, well, I guess you get the idea. So I would like to thank Igalia for sponsoring me for working on, on, on this as well as other uh, people from my company. And also the uh, Genome project for hosting all, all this stuff. Uh, you can find a wiki, uh, repositories, we can find, you can find us in, on the IRC. Uh, we have a mailing list and uh, a Baxilla component all hosted by the Genome project. So thank you. And, um, whoops, that's it. So if you have any questions, I, I can try to, yeah. Do you have any plans to support the commercial citizens? Uh, not now. I mean, we, we haven't really tried to do that. We are more focused now on getting people to use uh, Grillo, uh, and th that, that would depend on what people need. I mean, there's no reason uh, we can't do that, but at least I don't have any plans to do that myself. Caching data? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, we might add it in the future, yeah. Could be a good idea. That will be implemented. Would that be implemented without the uh, dynamic instead of plugin? What? Should that be done in the plugin? Oh, mm. We haven't think about it yet. Mm. I'm not sure. Maybe I, I get the idea uh, we should try to think of first, I would say, is that Grillo makes it for you. So that it, uh, we have always tried to make it very easy for plugin developers. So if we can just do it in the framework so you can forget about it in your plugin, we will do that. Other questions? Okay, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed it.